Everybody, welcome to this edition of the Atheist Experience. We are live today, Sunday, May 9th, 2010. It's Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day. Hi, Hi Mom. Uh, well, yeah, it's good timing. Yeah. I'm Matt Dillahoney. Joining me this week, Jeff D. Welcome back. Thank you. How are you? Good. I'm good. We're generally good. Well rested. Ready to go. Cool. Jeff's been eager to go since about 15 minutes before we got on the air. <laughs> and since neither of us brought in anything specific to talk about, we'll probably jump into calls just as soon as the announcements are done. And I'm going to make them relatively quick. I know that last week Russell mentioned the AC elections were held. Um, the information about that's available at the website. The Atheist Experience is a weekly call-in live television program out of Austin, Texas, sponsored by the Atheist Community of Austin. You can find out more about the show by visiting the show's website, www.atheist-experience.com. And you can find out more about the ACA by visiting our website, www.atheist-community.org. Um, you can... There's a frequently asked questions page there, as well as other ways to communicate, message boards, Yahoo lists. Uh, if you don't get through on the phones today, or if you don't want to, you can email tv at atheist-community.org, and that goes to myself, the co-host, some of the people behind the scenes. Um, in addition to this program, the ACL also sponsors a what is supposed to be a bi-weekly internet audio podcast, which is currently on hiatus. Uh, it's the nonprofits in our uh, P R O P H E T S. You can go to nonprofitsradio.com for more information. Right now, all we're trying to do is figure out the best day for us to do it because I now have Saturday conflicts and there's other scheduling things. The show is not dead; it's not gone. We're just in the in a transitional phase to get back to to what we had before. And I'll make an announcement here just as soon as we're ready to to start pumping out new episodes of that podcast. And the, in addition to the, the programs, the ACA also sponsors a bunch of uh, activities throughout the week and month, including an Atheist Happy Hour at the Dog and Duck on Thursdays beginning around 7 o'clock. And after this program is over, we get together for dinner at Romeo. oh, not at Romeo's, at Threadgills, <laughs> 301 West Riverside Drive. Uh, we're on the air until 6 o'clock. We'll be on at Threadgills around 6.30. Uh, the reason I meant to mention Romeo's is because we have Sunday brunches every Sunday except for the first Sunday of the month at uh, Romeo's on Barton Springs Road. And the first Sunday of the month is reserved for our lecture series, although last week's was the elections instead. Next Sunday, we will not be at Romeo's. Um, so if you're used to coming down to Romeo's for brunch, uh, instead we will be at the Capitol here in Austin uh, for the rally to give a little uh, feedback to the State Board of Education that has been systematically destroying public education in Texas and around the United States. Because uh, what happens in Texas doesn't stay in Texas, unfortunately. May 16th at 11 o'clock, uh, we'll be down there uh, along with Texas Freedom Network, Atheist, uh, American Atheists, uh, tons and tons of people from all sorts of different groups uh, to stand in unison in protest against what the State Board of Education is doing. Uh, it should be a great rally and we'd like to see as many people down there as possible. Um, in addition to all of that, I have nothing. <laughs> you're, I, adding, you're adding zero. I didn't bring my actual notebook that has my my list of things uh, that I, we should we should hit on. Um, so how have you been apart from good today? I am doing well, working on a secret project with a uh, partner of mine from years and years and years ago. But I can't talk about it. Great. Very very busy. Secret projects. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know what else. Anybody had to say, if I missed an announcement, you feel free to let me know or call in or whatever else, but we might as well go ahead and get started taking calls right off the way we've got. Is it Luca in New York? Yeah, hello. What's up, Matt? How you doing? Hey, Luca. Very good. I um, I already called once, uh, maybe a month ago, and I um, wrote you an email last week. Mm -hmm. And um, I basically have a story I'd like to share with you guys, but first I have just have a basic question. Um, uh, like I know, I've looked up like uh, the New Testament when uh, you know the actual timing of it being written, and I get uh, the impression that it wasn't written any time before 
like uh, 50, 60 AD. That's the earliest it was written. But do you know of any, like, uh, you know, reliable source? Can you point me in the direction of some book or some website about that? Because I want to be able to, you know, when dismantling, a, you know, a Christian's uh, belief about it being an actual testimony, I want to know what I'm talking about. Well, that would be good. I, there's not a book that's that's leaping to mind, and actually, probably one of the best things you can do. There used to be a website called earlychristianwritings.com, but I think it's been taken down, um, and that had a really good list of scholarly dates uh, that had footnotes and stuff. Actually, if you go to, uh, I hate sending it here right off the bat, but if you go to the Wikipedia articles for each of the books in the New Testament, they're fairly well sourced. At the bottom of the page, there'll be links to a lot of different books. The problem is, there's not a great deal of agreement on when the books were written, um, and you're going to you're going to have arguments. The people who the scholars who are reliably dating, for example, the Gospels to 70 AD after, um, you're going to find objections from Christians who are saying, "Well, the reason they dated it that is because it mentions, you know, the fall of Jerusalem, and that happened in what 72 AD, I think." And right. so they dated after that, when really it was written before that, and it was prophetic. Um, and, they, you know, um, right. it's, it's something that you're not going to resolve. Um, there's, there's a bunch of good resources. I, we have some uh, book recommendations on the website, or we did have, and if not, um, I can look at putting together some of the ones um, that I've used. This thing's going to drive me nuts. Um, Wait, um, the reason I ask about, is because um, you know the guy, um, you debated him and kicked his ass. Um, Matt Flick, I think. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's like an old for religious and whatnot. But like, I I checked on his website and he says, contrary to what some atheists say, it's very possible that it might have been written as early as uh, 50 A.D. And I'm like, okay, that's still 20 years after Jesus was dead. Uh, and 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 still, my question is. Where does he, you know, does he just pull that figure out of his ass? And if he's pulling it out of his ass, what does he need to say uh, 31 uh, AD, you know, as long as he's making it up? Well, well, just, you know, I was hoping there was some kind of, uh, you know, tangible well, reason to, uh, to believe that one way or the other. Can we recommend the um, Who Wrote the Bible yeah. books? Want to mention those? Uh, except that I, I don't have the info on it at the moment. One thing that, that I'll recommend, and, and you know, we can do some of this in email. For some reason, this thing showing up is battery power, so it keeps dimming, even though it's plugged right. in. So I don't know what's going on. One of the things that I'll recommend um, is that you avoid it entirely because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it was written um, by actual disciples the day after it happened it's still not sufficient to claim that the events took place. It's still not sufficient justification that any miracle actually occurred. Um, and, and one of the best examples, or one of my, my favorite examples, is that there are people that you can go talk to right now who will, you can talk to the, the actual person who claims to have been abducted by aliens. Now, right. this is obviously a firsthand testimony in this case, um, and yet despite the fact that you have first-hand testimony that you can investigate and their stories are remarkably similar and share a lot of details, people generally don't believe them. So uh, given, given that we have no idea who the authors of the Gospels were, we have no good indication of exactly when they were written. We, we, most scholars don't hold that they were written by eyewitnesses. They don't read as if they were written by eyewitnesses. Um, what, what reason does anybody have to ha have in order to claim that we should pay attention to what they say. And even if they were written by eyewitnesses right after the events, that's still not enough. It's no different from, from talking to alien abductees. Right, right, right. All right, well, do you want me um, to share my story with you guys? Sure. Um, do, you know, do you know about this, uh, this group called uh, Alpha? It's, no. it's basically, it's, 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 a, it's like, a, they, they, they sell themselves as a, let's explore philosophically the meaning of life. It's just a washed up, uh, you know, biblical indoctrination kind of thing, but um, I, I, I did go to one of their meetings right next to my house, is where they happened to meet, and uh, I was obviously the only atheist in the, in the, in the forum discussing stuff, and uh, um, I basically, um, I told, like I was kind of counting on them not really knowing much about the Bible, like many Christians don't, and uh, I basically went on to, to, to tell them, oh, there's so many horrible things in the Quran. They talk about, you know, stabbing pregnant women in the, in the stomach, and they talk about <laughs> raping, you know, all the stuff that is actually in the Old Testament. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and they were all, like, really shocked. 
and they said, "Oh my God, I, see, this is exactly why you know it's better to be a Christian than a than a than a Muslim." And they went on forever about that. And then um, you know, the instant I told them, actually, you know, this is from Exodus, this is from uh, you know yeah. uh, all that, and it was the most amazing uh, 180 degree turn. And, oh no, no, this is a uh, uh, that's the Old Testament. That doesn't count. And uh, uh, and actually, I mentioned, oh, yeah, this is actually from the first half of the Quran, though. It's not from the second half. Uh, mo- most of uh, Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was expecting them to. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, say, say, say the whole Old Testament doesn't count thing. And, uh, yeah. So. Sounds like a good fun. time. Yeah. Well, All great. Right, well. That sounds like it was a lot of fun. And something we probably should have done. Hey, that looks like it work. it's working now. Thanks. Awesome. Well, thanks for calling. I'm going to go ahead and get on some other callers real quick. All right. Take care. Cheers. All right. Bye. We've got Matt in Kokomo. Mm-hmm. How you doing, What's Matt? What's up, guys? I'm pretty good. How about you? Good. Pretty good. Um, well, first off, uh, I'd, I'd like to say uh, to Matt, if, if I did have to believe in a God, I think you would be it. You're logical, rational, and, and I think, you know, we should all... I'll release you from any obligation. Your example. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Anyway, um, the uh, uh, question I had was, uh, I uh, I was growing up in a Christian household, a really a uh, pretty uh, hardcore Christian household, and once I hit about twenty, I kind of uh, I started thinking about things, and I'm like, you know, this. You know, there's, there's like, like you, I believe in, um, I believe that, you know, you sh- there should be, like, evidence, like, really understandable evidence, you know, to prove the existence in something like a god mm-hmm. or anything like that. And, you know, I looked like you did, and I didn't find any. And, um, you know, so I guess uh, I kind of, I consider myself atheist, and I've pretty much been everything but disowned by my family because of, you know, that, because of that. And, um... Anyway, um, the the point of my call is um, from like I guess uh, from you know a physics standpoint, I know that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, and if if we like have that some sort of energy like that in our bodies, energy like that can only be transferred. So would that be sort of like maybe a, a quote unquote afterlife or something? I was wondering what you thought about that. that well, d- d- uh, what's your definition of life? I mean, if it's if it's the biological processes that make your body able to, you know, remain animate, then no, because once your body's not doing that anymore, then you don't have life. If it's if it's the thoughts in your head, well, once the the pattern of uh, of of information stored in your brain is no longer functioning, then you don't have that either. Mm-hmm. So I, I would say no can't can't really can't really make a good case for an afterlife on that basis now you can say you know i uh, uh that you you want your body to be put in the ground where it will provide nutrients t- to plants you can do that yeah. that's that's you know sustaining some other life but it's not you getting to continue to exist there's a there's a lot of confusion when people start tossing around the word energy because all this new age crap um tends to toss around the word energy because it's prone to being used for equivocation. Um, yeah, there's energy and matter. So what? Um, you know, it's like, does a battery have an afterlife once, once we've drained it? I, the, the, the thing, you know, what Jeff was pointing about, how you, def- how you define life, um, you know, nothing about who I am uh, or, or everything about who I am, I guess, is, as far as I can tell, the product of my brain, which is, you know, yeah, there's energy there, but there's no identifiable mechanism for after I'm dead and, and my body begins to decay and the, the whatever energy there was, you know, dissipates, etc., that this represents me in any sense um, any more than, you know, once we've drained the battery, it, it has an afterlife. Yeah. I think it's I think it's more word games than anything. I mean, one of the 
one of, uh, one of what I think is uh, uh, the best arguments against the existence of a god is that we have no evidence whatsoever that any kind of consciousness can exist apart from a physical brain. Mm -hmm. You know, and that the, it, you'll find a lot of people who believe in gods also believe in ghosts and spooks and demons or, and, and, and afterlives and whatnot because, you know, that once you've once you take that on board, sure, I mean, you could have all kinds of, 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 of people <laughs> floating around without any bodies, but there is no evidence whatsoever that there's any such thing. Yeah, I, I think that the thing that just, it kind of, you know, that, that bothers me is, you know, I'm, I'm alive and conscious and I'm doing things, and, and then, you know, like, I know that one day I will die, and, and that, you know, just, you know, pe you know, I've been told and believe that, you know, if, if there's, nothing like it's just nothing after that you know like like you don't be reincarnated or, or whatever you want to you know yeah. say happens to you just just like if there's just nothing that's just unacceptable to me and that's kind of scary in a way because i well, want to but you exist know, you know in some way you can you know start making a list of things that are unacceptable to you you know the fact that they're unacceptable does not mean they're not true if you're concerned about um about living uh a good long, healthy life, then the thing to do is to support research into uh, life extension, right? Into medical technology and, 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 and human life extension. Because that's addressing the actual problem. You know, otherwise you're just, you're just, you know, in denial. Yeah, you're saying I don't want to live in a world where I don't get to continue living. Well, how is that different from saying I don't want to live in a world where I'm not a billionaire? True, true. Yeah, it's, I mean, there's no denying that the religious claims of, of afterlifes um, it, it can make people feel good. Just like uh, that buying a lottery ticket and thinking about your chances to win the lottery uh, and having those dreams and spending the money before you actually get it can make people feel good. Uh, but when you don't get it, um, you know, is that suddenly unacceptable? I mean, nobody nobody's presented any reason to think that any of us are going to exist after we're dead. And there's the, the, the quote, which I'll paraphrase, which was originally attributed to Mark Twain, um, when he was asked about the idea of being afraid of being, being dead, and I'll, I'll argue that nobody uh, experiences being dead. Uh, he said, I was dead for a billion years before I was born and wasn't troubled by it one bit. Mm-hmm. I had a, a friend of mine, he, uh, he considers himself atheist, and he, uh, I guess I had a brush with death. Um, he was uh, walking down the street on a hill, and a car, like, I guess the brakes went out or something, and it actually rolled over him, and he just, like, instantly lost consciousness, and he says he remembers, like, uh, just like seeing, you know, that light that everyone supposedly sees and being very content, you know, where he was at. And then when he came out of it, he was, I get he, he turned religious on me. And I was just like, uh, <laughs> it's kind of weird. It, uh, everyone, uh, go ahead. It, it, it happens. There, there are scientists who actually study near-death experience phenomena. And while we don't completely understand it, there's no reason to think that it's not just a dying brain, a malfunctioning, oxygen-deprived brain right. dying. And, and mm -hmm. religions have, of course, heard these stories that people report from near-death experiences. And, you know, the, all of the stories you hear from religions about what you're going to see when you're on your way to heaven are all based on these reports of what people actually do experience when they're having near-death experiences, but there's 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 no way to to connect the dots there between, you know, the the things that go on in your brain when it's shutting down, and the idea that those are really images from some real reality that you're going to after life. Mm -hmm. You know, I I think it would probably be just the the brain's way of coping with a stressful situation. You know. Or, or malfunctioning but, when it's oxygen deprived. I mean, it'd be yeah, like pouring yeah. sugar in the gas tank right. type of thing. Right. So of course, <laughs> so of course, that's what you're going to hear. You know, is stuff that sounds like that. Well, fine. The question still is: Is there any evidence that that you could ha that your consciousness could exist without your body? And well, there isn't. 
Yeah, so. and they've tested, by the way, they've tested um, near-death experience claims. One, one, you know, people would claim they would, they would float off the bed, et cetera, up towards the ceiling, but yet they could see and hear things that they shouldn't have been able to see and hear. So the simple way to test it is to put a, a note up on top of, for example, a bookshelf that they would be flying over, and then when they come back, ask them what, you know, what the note was. Um, they've, they've done it for, you know, the, the people who've claimed astral projection and things like that, and um, it fails every time. The other thing to note is that people who have near-death experiences, for those who don't, who, who have the kind of the general, uh, you know, there's a light and a tunnel type thing, which, to me, anybody who's fainted has probably seen uh, a tunnel. You know, we have, a, there's a reason we call it tunnel vision um, in those situations, but for those people who don't experience the generic, for those people who experience specific symbolism and imagery, it almost always exactly matches the religious beliefs that they have. You don't have Hindus seeing Jesus. You don't have Protestants seeing the Virgin Mary. Hmm. There, I, I don't know if uh, this uh, report that I read, uh, I, I know you probably sure on time when I get to the callers. I just want to say one more thing. Sure. Um, I read somewhere on the Internet, like like I said, I don't know if it's a really reliable source, but they said that they actually, like, I guess, weighed somebody, like a, an actual person, before death and after death, and they said that, like, there was, like, a, a big, like, weight difference, like, on the, the, you know, energy or something. Yeah, it's just not true. And that made me think, you know, yeah, I'm just... Energy doesn't have weight. Yeah. So... Right there, there's, you know, that's a big question mark. It's a, the movie Seven Grams was titled after this. This is an old kind of urban legend thing um, that they claimed, oh, it's the weight of the soul. And the, the fact is that the original experiments that this was based on um, were, were just uh, inaccurate. I mean, you, you can do some, go to Skeptic's Dictionary. Um, it's skeptic.com, S-K-E-P-D-I-C.com. I'm sure there's an entry there for seven grams, weight of the soul, whatever. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right, well, hey, thank you for taking my call, guys. I hope I haven't sounded too much of an idiot. <laughs> no, you're well, That's fine. all right. This is all, you know, all this stuff is, is, um, is engineered to be very compelling sounding and very appealing sounding, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's natural for people to, when they hear these kinds of ideas, to go, oh, wow, maybe there's really something to that. I mean, it's... it's that's why religions picked these kinds of things to say to people, because it's mm -hmm. the stuff that we react to. But the bottom line always is, is there any actual evidence that this is really true? And, and I, I could imagine a scenario like what you were talking about with the kind of post hoc explanation where um, somebody has a near-death experience mm -hmm. thousands of years ago or a thousand years ago or whatever, and terrified of what they saw, regardless of what it was, they go to their holy man and say, what happened to me? And the holy man, being the skilled liar that most of them are, says, oh, well, you saw the afterlife. And, and this, doesn't, this isn't tied to any religion. I imagine this is how the mythos of afterlifes kind of uh, gained a foothold in, in you know, the popular thought. Right. So. I felt a presence. Well, that must have been the great juju in the sky. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, there was this tunnel and a light at the end. Well, that was the light of the special place you get to go after you're gone. Yeah. And it's no different from, I was thinking about somebody and the phone rang and it was them. Well, God wanted you to talk to them, that kind of thing. But anyway, thanks a lot, Matt. Appreciate it. All right. Take care. we got Charles here in Austin. How are you? Doing well. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Hi, Charles. Hello. Um, uh, I'm calling because I, I have the, the screener asked me if I was a theist. I told me I was a theist with theist inclinations. Okay. Uh, and the, the, the purpose of my call um, is because I'm terribly disturbed about what I, what I see as the, the danger of new atheism, or what is probably more aptly described as sort of a reductionist materialism. Um, and I think it's very tangible, not like spiritual, I'm going to be sentenced to hell sort of danger, but... Uh, a, a, a real material danger, if you will. Okay, and what's that danger? Well, um, first of all, I think, you know, the, the most obvious thing is that new atheism isn't primarily atheism, and it's, it's almost um, structurally deceptive. Um, I mean, I, I think, you know, atheism in and of itself is sort of vacuous. I mean, it, it doesn't really propose anything like you guys often claim. Sure. But there's something interesting that when you say 
will you please tell me what the uh, you know your your belief is or based on the reasons or your your proof that God exists because we have we're really a refutation of an ideology rather than an ideology in and of itself that really presumes to have um, an, the mechanisms by which to judge the answer. It's not atheism from which we derive that. It's skepticism, science, so, critical thinking. See, that's actually what I was getting to. That's actually what you're not as well, unless you're, if you're talking about philosophical atheism, um, because that's completely what you're not. Um, you know, in, like in terms of Hume, I mean, science, that you continually parrot as being some sort of redemptive primary mover here in, in material life, is not skeptical in nature. The presumption of the uniformity of you know physical law throughout the universe. Is no, it's, it's not a presumption. It's an observation. No, it's not. You, when is the last sure time is. you observed? Uh, no, from know, what he's talking about, about it, being on this it, planet. It, no, no, no. It, it, it's a practical assumption. It is a it is an is a practical necessity. It, but it is not skeptical. There, yeah, if it, you science. Hume, who's science. The Godfather of skepticism. Okay. I am I am a Hume okay. follower. My point my point is if if such a thing you know made any sense. My point is that science. Well, I don't want to get caught in equivocation here. As it is done, is applied skepticism. No, it, you're using the, the word in a different sense in a very modern, loose sense. Yes, because I don't live in a 12th century. But not the sort of rigorous skepticism that most people assume you're talking about. It, it absolutely was, is. Hume was not uh, proposing incredulity. Hume, I'm sure you're familiar with the um, induction fallacy. Excuse me, excuse me. Uh, uh, okay. I, yeah, I'm sure you two guys would love to have a long philosophical debate about this, but you called the show to say there was a danger, and yes. I asked you That's what that danger thing. is. Okay. Okay. Tell me so, what the danger is. The danger is, is that reduction, reductionist materialism seeks to deprive us of the mechanisms by which we would defend ourselves from certain pseudo-modern horrors that maybe Ray Kurzweil or other reductionist materialism would like to perpetrate on humanity, like uploading the entirety of the human race um, into, into some massive computer because humans are really reducible to physical structures. And, and those are dangerous Assumptions. Why is it why, dangerous? Why is, why is an idea dangerous? I mean, uh, he's not. He's no, it's uh, not, it's show not me a guy who's proposed. Uh, you know, any idea can be forced on people, and then you can call that idea. Then you can call that activity of forcing that idea on someone dangerous. Is but the idea of dangerous, or is it not dangerous? Is it's what? not true. Okay, How's but that? that's not what I said. I said, is it dangerous? Well, are you, but are you saying that, that uh, uploading consciousnesses would work? Would I have it work? No, I have no clue. Well, but if it works, then it's, if it works, if it works, then isn't certain. the underlying premise true? Uh, I think that's going to be nearly impossible to determine, and that brings us... Well, no, 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 hold on now, have, hold on now, you're talking about this about horror, horror, which is this about horror. horror reality. Can, um, you've got to let Jeff talk. I know you. Can, I know you can't hear him. He's trying to ask you, questions. You directly. called in to tell us that we're dangerous, okay? And now we get a uh -huh. chance to defend ourselves. Okay. That's now, I, 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 if I'm your example, that. your example of a horror that you think uh, is led to by uh, by reductionism, yes, was uh, uploading consciousness into computer as if human beings were were uh, where it could be boiled down to just material um, uh, forces, right? Correct. And I'm asking you, do you think it would work? Because if you do think it would work, then the assumption that we are physical is true. If you don't think it would no. work, then the assumption we're, that we're physical is not true, and you win. Reality so either way, what, what is your, where's the horror? Where's the horror? Either it's true or it's not. Nobody's going to get uploaded if Correct. it won't work. Correct. I have the intuition. I mean, it, it's, it's impossible to say at this juncture, but I have the intuition that it is not possible. Well, in okay. any case, where's, where's the, horror? the horror? If it won't work, then where's the horror? Where's the horror? Yeah. Uh, where, where's the horror in essentially convincing humanity that, I mean, I, I, I assume you're familiar with Ray Kurzweil and yeah. singul singularity? Yes, in fact, in fact, I agree with him. Okay, I, I assume that because you're okay. a reduction. Okay. Uh, and well, did you assume that I agree with him? Sorry? Never mind, keep going. I don't, I'm having a little trouble distinguishing between the two voices. I, I'm sorry. I, Are you I, watching I, the show? 
I'm sorry? Are you not watching the show? Um, yes, but there is a delay, and it, it makes it a little tricky. All right, all right, please. Go ahead. Okay. Trying, to, trying to find out where this horror okay. is that you think that, we're, that uh, there's a danger of our position leading to. Well, uh, if it's wrong, is it, is, it, is it good to suppose that uploading Grandpa onto a computer is, is harmless, if it's wrong? I mean, if it's not true that it could be done then mm -hmm. that idea will last only as long, uh, only until it is discovered, hey, this doesn't work. And then the idea is, is I finished. I think you might be structurally prevented from that discovery. I mean, how would you know? Then, then there can't be a horror. But if there's no uploading because we can't get it to work, then there's no uploading. Where's the no, horror? No, no, no. You, I, you, you, you misunderstand me. I don't think the uploading um, is, is possible. I you're just, you're just turned off by the idea. It's supposed to be uploaded as possible. Well, okay, well, you know, scientists are not going to be uploading anybody if they can't. No, right? I, I, no, no, right? I think you're misunderstanding me. I'm sorry. Okay, try again. Uh, I think what I'm saying is I don't think the, cre the creation of this structure that would, let's say we have this human-level intelligence that's recreated with the same memories, the same structure, the same capacities. Yeah. I don't think that's sufficient to say that that person was uploaded. I mean, I think you could, it's conceivable to me that you could create So the horror is, the hor let, me, let me see if this is correct. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong here, right? You're, what you find horrifying is the idea that um, a human being's mind could be exactly duplicated and you personally would be creeped out by that because no. you have an a priori no. assumption that that's not how, how our consciousnesses no. work. No. Therefore, no, you'd be creeped out by that copy of Grandpa. I don't find that the process itself uh, to be disturbing. I find the assumption that, as Ray Kurzweil says, that it will be us, that the, this future sort of... Right, uh, that's right. What he just said. right, that's exactly what I just said. Okay, you, have, a, you, have an, a, you have an a priori assumption that that can't be us. And so when, if they make a thing that a, seems to be... I have a priori suspicion. <laughs> okay, fine. I'm not sure. Fine. Well, so, what do you so, do? so you called us to tell us that what we're doing uh, could lead to horror. And the horror is well, an a priori suspicion you've got. Well, no, congratulations. No, no, no. no, no, no. I, congratulations. Have, no, you no, can no. join the people who thought that automobiles were terrifying because it must be physically impossible <laughs> for our bodies to go more than 25 miles an hour. But, um, dude, the, that's where you're coming from. The other thing no, is that... Not where I'm coming from. Yes, it is. Hang on. Hey, Charles, Charles. The other thing that I find asinine about this entire conversation is that I haven't proposed that idea at all, and it's not something that is, it, while, it is while it is consistent with, it is not in any way dependent upon you, I atheism. Agree, I agree, but what, what does happen... Well, then I'm right, so what's your point? No, but what does happen... In, what you, you, the, the problem is, is that you're really forgetting what I've said, is that the whole discussion seeks to deprive us of the mechanisms by which we might defend ourselves. And let me take Michael Shermer as an what, example. What are you defending yourself debate. against? I, I, see, that's the thing. The only horror you've mentioned is the horror you're going to feel because of a suspicion you have. That's it. You want to be defended from that? Go ahead and believe whatever you want, dude. Nobody's telling you you can't you continue to believe is this, is this that our bodies are animated by you spooks. You want, you scream it at me? Dude, that, you can, I, can I make my point? I'm sorry. You want you want you're you're saying that we're that we're running the risk of depriving you of the uh, of the ability to defend yourself against uh, challenges to your notion that our bodies are animated by no. spiritual that, that, that's spooks. Trying, that, that, that's that's the straw man argument you're presenting. What? what? what Explain what it I'm then. Explain is, where you're really coming from. I'm sorry. Explain where you're really coming from then. I'm I I am afraid in this pseudo modern generation and the you know the modernists being, you know, those living in the time of social Darwinism, and sort of this resurgence in faith on both sides, uh -huh. you know, in scientism, uh, okay. are, going to are going to commit the same things that would naturally follow once you have the presumption that humans are merely structure. Uh -huh. And it becomes... It becomes You're it wrong. Follows no, it matters no little, stop, Charles. Due to the stop, initial person, Charles. If you can Charles, stop. Please demonstrate that it a naturally follows from the idea that humans are merely material what you can do. How do you get from that is to the ought? Okay, then 
If I no, can't produce the material, no, the structures, Charles, I can't produce the person. Charles, don't yes. do an okay. I asked a question. I'm answering your question. All right. How do you get from the is to the ought? I'm sorry, I did not hear the last part. How do, How do you get from the is to the ought? No, it's not the ought. Yes, it's you are. You're saying ought. it's a necessary conclusion from it. No, 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 no. See, here's what you're saying. I'm saying is that it's the, the argument is that there is no difference. So there is an ought. It doesn't matter. No, the point. argument is not that there is no difference. Nobody, okay, no, well, nobody, that, that, nobody, then, then we well, have Charles, Charles. Well, I'd be happy to defend the transhumanist position since I'm a transhumanist. I'd be happy to defend that. That's what he's going after. Though it's no, just, it's just really not true, Charles. Do. Not all I atheists are... The way you Charles, may we speak this on our own show, please? I, I think not, you're having no problem speaking. Charles! Go ahead. It is not true that all atheists are transhumanists. I'm one. I didn't say they were. I said reductionists generally are. <laughs> I started out by Charles, saying, Charles, you're not primarily Charles, atheist. You are free to continue to believe that there's something else going on besides the, you know, the, fu the I physical... I know there's something else going on. Would you please stop interrupting me, or we're going to hang up on you? Okay, go ahead. All right. You are free to continue to believe that there's something else going on besides the physical function of our brains. You're going to remain free to believe that. Why would you not? I, I what are you afraid concern. is going to happen? I'm sorry, are you asking what are you me now? Can I I'm asking, yes, I'm asking, ask you a question. What are you afraid is going to happen? Um, it, it's not about what I'm afraid is going to happen as a direct result of that. I mean, I, I think you're really misunderstanding me. What I'm saying is that once you deprive me of the mechanisms to defend against that, like things like mind, love, non-material things that people don't really take for granted. May I? May I? Excuse me? Excuse me? Just correct you for a second. Hey, for Char just mechanisms. Charles? For just machines. Charles? I'm sorry. Not okay. depriving you of love. Not You're depriving you of any of those things you just listed. Not a one of them. Well, they are, well, in fact, that's what, what I was going to say about Michael Shermer. And, and, and by the way, n atheists are not depriving you of anything. Atheists are pointing out that you already lack the ability to prove the things that you seem to want to prove. I disagree. And like I said, yes, that, well, okay, fine. And, and, and you're calling our show and telling us that we're dangerous you are because dangerous. you disagree you that dangerous when we point out... You're Philistines. You are exceedingly practical scientism. No, not scientism. Answers. Scientism. I mean, you don't get so to just make up words in order to has, in has order he, knock down stories. I, ask, I just want to. I just want to verify. Has this caller insulted us enough? Has this caller insulted us enough that we may now insult him in return? Uh, probably. Yeah, yeah, I would probably not like to. Really probably. Let me tell you my argument. Charles, you haven't got one, dude. That's the problem. Hang on. Hang. Everybody, stop. Charles, a minute ago. You said that you know yes. that humans are more. Do no, I, I, that's not what I said. I said I know that there are non-material things that, aren't, that the materialist structure doesn't allow for that I know. Okay. That. How do you know this? Because I've had direct experience with them, as have you. Uh, would, would you like the example? Sure. I'd like an argument, not an example. Okay. Well, I, I take it for granted that you've read a novel. Yes. Okay, where was that novel located when you read it? In my hands. Well, that's where the text was. That's and correct. The distinction between that's um, correct. I had a conceptual oh, good perception of the I novel. It existed only as a physical brain state, and if you think there was more to that it, that isn't sufficient. It, that it, isn't sufficient because how do you know it's not sufficient? How do you know it's not sufficient? Because it doesn't take into account the two different minds that are involved in the ultimate fruition of the novel. There, to say that it's a there aren't state for you isn't sufficient to take into account that brain which created it, that mind. Which the is brain that created it, the great brain that created it, has one conception of the novel, and the guy that reads it has a different conception of the novel. No, no, and my, that's, that's inaccurate. That's really a, a, a rudimentary, insufficient understanding of it. Really? Because. Yes, because the object itself is not reducible. It's not an one or the object. Other. It's uh if Let me I say this tree, if, tree, Matt Dillahoney, tree. What just happened? Did, I, I'm not very specific. You but said a thought, word that conveyed an idea in the English language, which exactly. brought into my, you're gonna let me finish or am I gonna hang up on your ass? Which brought into my head the concept of a plant. 
what there is in my head as a physical brain state because of what you said, the concept. You do not get to conflate your idea of a tree with my idea of a tree and then say that because there are two ideas of a tree, there's something we can't explain. Because you got a brain despite evidence to the contrary, you're, and so do I. I think, I think you're missing the point. <laughs> okay. Because, I mean, you're doing the same thing you you're don't doing, which is interrupting me. Dude, and, we, and we have... Because the, 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 uh, let him go. the edges of perception, the basis of our understanding were hemmed in by illusions of meaning that materialism can't explain. It's not a sufficient framework. If I say, I believe in a non-material being called God... No, you are uh, asserting that it is impossible. Is not, material you, science doesn't allow for that. No, sir. No, sir. You are asserting that it is impossible, materialistically, to account for thought. Please demonstrate that this is true, and not just a flat frickin' assertion did not from you. Say that. I said it is impossible to account for the thing called a novel. You, you're talking about thought. I'm talking about the novel. The novel. Now, now here's what I'm that saying. Is I'm a, not that is an abstract is concept. Thing. I'm not suggesting. I'm sorry? The novel, as you're using it, is an abstract concept. I'm talking about... I don't believe in the ghetto of conception like you do. I don't believe that love is just a chemical fever with all this other poetic... Badness. What else is it, and how do you know that it's more? You know what I think is you dangerous? You know what I think is dangerous? I think it's dangerous... That to, for us to be living in a world where we are, in fact, un discovering the physical basis for things. <laughs> and there's people like you. Uh -huh, people there's like people me. like you. Yo, hey, you called us to I call us you. dangerous. Right back at you. Okay? okay? Cavemen <laughs> like you who want to reject what has actually been discovered because it kind of creeps you what out. What has been discovered? You are What has been a, discovered? What are you talking about? The, we, we know vast amounts about how the brain works. I'm not talking and, about the brain. All I'm right. talking about the mind. I had my say, and you've had your say over what is, and over and what over is the mind? What is your mind? Rather like what is the mind? What is the mind? What is the mind? What is the mind? That's a great question. And because I'm a solipsist, because I'm uncertain... You're a solipsist? I'm trapped like most people... I wow. Didn't do it. Why didn't you start? If you're a solipsist, <laughs> um, we're all just figments of your freaking imagination anyway, so why don't you stay home and mentally masturbate instead of calling a waste of time on our show? Ask yourself why you're imagining uh, you know, a couple of guys like us who are going to sit here and argue with you. If yeah. you in fact, you, the entire universe is just you know, an imaginary creation of your own. Yeah. Wow. Uh, until you actually demonstrate wow. that some thing that you want to label a mind actually exists as a thing, um, now you're just talking about abstracts. And it's, and it's a waste of our time, which is why we went round and round. Uh, yeah, enough of that. Yeah, we, yeah I didn't, I didn't go far enough. I think it's dangerous to live in a world with like nuclear bombs yeah. when there's solipsists running around loose. Uh, it's, it's dangerous that you guys are actually in favor of investigating to discover the real versus the unreal. Well, sorry. Some of us give Hi. a damn. Hey, Hi. Hi. Sorry Hello? we intruded on your phone call. To yeah, thanks for off tolerating that. What can we do for you? Hello, uh, this is Ed in Louisville. Hi, yeah. Ed. Yeah. You're okay, on. great. Uh, I was going to talk about the uh, Kentucky Homeland Security lawsuit. Uh, Kentucky seems to be one of the states that's giving Texas a run for its money in uh, bad Christian policies interfering with uh, the government. Yeah. Okay. Had, why, uh, why, can you quickly summarize what's going on there in Kentucky for our viewers who might not know? And me, the Kentucky since I don't Homeland know. Security lawsuit. Uh, after September 11th, uh, there are, the governor, in a yearly report, has to acknowledge uh, security of the Commonwealth is dependent upon Almighty God. As oh, does, that right. As does the uh, in a yearly report. As does the um, EOC uh, Emergency Operations Center in all its education and training materials, and a plaque has been posted stating, uh, making a statement with that, also with uh, Bible verses on it, uh, posted in the state capitol in Frankfurt. Mm. That's just one of our many uh, problems. Yeah. Uh, we won that lawsuit at the uh, district level. It is now 
in the appeals, and the state has uh, written their appeal, and we're in the process of of writing our response to that. Okay. Well, good work. Uh, how do you think that's going to go? Uh, we think that we're going to win. We won at the district level. Uh, recently, the state Supreme Court also uh, ruled against a public funding to Baptist University for a pharmacy college because they were denying admission to uh, certain individuals, such as homosexuals, into their college. There's been a whole slew of church-state separation violations here in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, there was a high school football coach who took his players to the revival, and seven of them got baptized. There's a lawsuit about a Baptist children home that uh, coerces children to become Baptist. Uh, there have been other laws recently. They had the 21st Century Bill of Rights. This one actually was not passed, but it would have amended the Kentucky Constitution, claiming that it could ignore the United States Constitution via the Tenth Amendment. <laughs> and it would have made it illegal any law from the federal government that limited the posting of the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. uh, it also had some other right-wing stuff in it. Uh, uh, let's see, oh, about guns and ammunition. Uh, let's see, know that basically any law that, all these laws would be avoid, avoided. Any law that should compel certain persons to participate in health care systems, provide abortion service, surrender firearms, prevent it has some things about the coal industry that's kind of local, posting the Ten Commandments, uh -huh. actions motivated by sincerely held religious belief, and those are some of the main things. But basically, it, it, it sounded to me almost like this amendment would have had Kentucky leave the Union. I thought they were all going to move to South Carolina, but... Yeah. I was looking forward to that. that you remember when... when uh, that, when some fundamentalists movement? wanted to, yeah, they wanted to pull up stakes and all move to, was it South Carolina? I think it was South Carolina. I, th I was looking forward to that because I thought then we'd just build a wall around it and we're done. But yeah. South Carolina was one of the states that, uh, uh, hope you still hear me, South Carolina yeah. was one of the states that uh, I was thinking of when I said one of the states giving Texas a run for its money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm in big support of the May 16th rally. I won't be able to be here. Be Ed, there, but, Ed uh, are, you, are you with an organization in Kentucky then? And what's your organization? I am a member of a couple of national organizations, uh, American Atheist and Freedom From Religion Foundation. Uh -huh. And I'm also highly involved in the Louisville Atheist and Free Thinkers. Cool. So who is actually behind the, um, the ongoing lawsuit? The lawsuit is uh, American Atheists, okay. and they have been victorious, and uh, th there's, b because this one actually compels individuals, government officials to make statements, it goes beyond any claim of ceremonial deism, yeah. and we've, yeah. it, we firmly believe that we'll probably be victorious in this, and the fact that the state Supreme Court ruled uh, correctly in a recent church-state separation uh, lawsuit regarding the funding to a pharmacy college at a Baptist university, uh, we think that that bodes well for us. But you never know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, very um, um, interesting. Yeah. Good luck out there. All right. Thanks, and you do, guys do a great job. Thanks, Ed. Thanks for calling, man. And if you guys have all this stuff going on in your area, uh, you know, if you don't have a local group, obviously you can start up a local group. It's really not that hard. Ours started with an ad in the newspaper and grew from there. Um, you know, I realize that, you know, people have all often asked, you know, why would you atheists get together to talk about not believing in stuff? And uh, we don't. <laughs> we, we get together, first of all, because we like to socialize with people. Uh -huh. But also we talk about the things that we do believe in and the things that we do care about. And about how to defend ourselves from yes. efforts by others to get us to believe in some things that we don't believe. Yes, and when you take away our defense... Oh, never mind. I won't <laughs> I, I'm still baffled. How can I take... I, oh, know. boy. And by the way, uh, you know, just to backtrack a little, um, 
if you're a solipsist, aren't you taking away your own defense? Just I don't know why a solipsist would be concerned about uploading of consciousness into a computer. All he has to do is believe that, didn't, that it doesn't happen. Well, he's not still on to ask, and, and for that I'm almost willing to thank God. Uh, but <laughs> We got Kyle and Abilene. How you doing? Kyle? Kyle? Oh, hello? Hi, Hi Kyle. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. How are you? Man, it's it's uh, truly an honor to talk to both you guys and 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 the rest of you too, man. I've been trying to get to get in there and talk to you guys for quite a while, and uh, I haven't noticed you guys have uh, had a caller from from Abilene ever. But uh, uh, you had a caller a while back that uh, you were argue, arguing with uh, about uh, abiogenesis, and uh, right as the call ended, you. You said um, it's been done, uh, creating life from non-life. Uh, go look it up. And uh, uh, as an atheist, uh, um, I was surprised by that. So uh, I did a little bit of research, not very thorough, but I just found the experiments in the 50s. The Miller-Urey experiments? The what? Miller-Urey experiments in 53? Yeah, yeah. That, Those aren't yeah, the only familiar. ones. Those aren't the only ones, but yeah. <clears throat> and uh, there was... Uh, like seven of the uh, proteins that were required for life. Sure. Out of the like twenty-seven. Yeah. So, um, has there been uh, experiments recently? There are that, ongoing uh, experiments all the time, and uh, John Oro has done experiments as well. You can look those up. Um, no, we haven't produced every single. Uh, elem, or every single protein that's required for life. The point was that from non-living material, we have produced living material, the basic building blocks of life, amino acids and, and proteins. That's it. Okay. it that's all you okay. need to kill off. And we don't have to, we don't have to sh you know, sh shake up a test tube and apply electricity and have a frog come out. We, we just, the argu their argument is that it is impossible for life to come from non-life. And we've already demonstrated in the laboratory many, many times that the basic building blocks of life can actually come from non-living material. And as long as that's possible, the rest is possible. Okay, yeah. I, I mean, I didn't expect to get, like you said, like a frog to come out. But yeah. I, I was thinking, you know, like uh, all the building blocks would need to be there. No, and there's lots, there's lots of different objections, too, about whether or not they're left-handed or right-handed, and, and people would say, and the point, is, the point there is that you don't get to define what, it's like, like the people who claim that if the, the Earth's tilt was slightly off, life would, would, would no longer exist. Well, yeah, life as you know it, but what other possible life is there? Um, they're making a broad statement that absolutely, under no circumstances, can living material come from non-living material. Therefore, we need this supernatural God guy to intervene. And what science has done is demonstrated, you know what, we can get th some of this living material from non-living material. And we've only been working on this for about 50 years or so. Um, okay. You know, yeah, the, okay, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. The life itself had now. millions and billions of years, so. Okay, one more quick question that's been bothering me. Um, I watch a lot of debates uh, with uh, Dinesh D'Souza and, uh, you know, Hitchens and uh, uh, some, of, some of the other guys, the morality comes up, and uh, uh, the theists like to bring up, well, where do you get your basis for morality? And I'm always screaming out, um, well, I provide the basis for that morality, and to, and to me, it, it it's kind of irrelevant where the basis comes from and it doesn't it doesn't really matter as long as uh the group as a whole agrees on what's going to perpetuate you know the community yeah. is that i mean does that make sense when I, mean, but I i i find that you know when i hear religious people talking uh you know asking about a basis for morality what they're really asking is an authority for morality that's what they're really getting at. It's like, well, we can tell them all kinds of stuff about how, well, we observe the world around us and we see what kinds of consequences come for our actions and we decide then on the basis of, you know, you know watching what the actual consequences are, we decide what sorts of ways to behave are productive and which ones aren't. And what they're really asking is not, it, it's obviously not what the basis is because that would be the basis. What they're asking is, you know, 
Who died and made you God? That's what they're asking. They say, well, it doesn't matter. You're, you're, you can't, we, we have this imaginary friend who is so smart that everything he says about what behaviors are right and wrong are, uh, is automatically right. How can you be automatically right? You can't. Therefore, you can't provide a basis for morality. Well, you know, how do you respond to that? Right. They say, well, yeah, they say, well, you know, you can't, it, it, you can rape somebody because it's just molecules in motion. And it doesn't, that's neither right and nor that, wrong. And apparently they're so. living in a universe where raping people leads to good consequences. Yeah, this is the same thing that, that a previous caller was trying to do as well. The, the claim that if human beings are merely physical matter, then everything is up for grabs and you know, it all goes out the window and rape is just you know, molecules in motion. Um, no, it's more than that. And the reason is because we've defined it and declared it to be so. We, as thinking, caring, empathetic uh, human beings who who are alive and who share space with others, we have gone and over the course of time constructed this kind of ethical uh, or this ethos about how, what we think is right and wrong. And it's from very simple beginnings. I'd rather not be dead, so I'm going to say it's wrong to kill me. And it's in my best interest to surround myself with other people who think right. it's wrong to kill them. Right. And you build but where do you there. get the authority to make such decisions? From us. Absolutely. Right. And what I don't understand is why is that not good enough for the theist? Because as soon as it's possible for human beings to have authority over stuff like that, it dethrones their God. Not only that, but it dethrones them. Right now, no, yeah. <laughs> right now, they're in complete agreement with their God, or one could argue that their God is in complete agreement with them. And as soon as you open up the possibility that they might be mistaken, that's catastrophic. As long as they've got God on their side, they can't be wrong. Boy, that's got to be comforting, but it doesn't make it true. Okay, guys, I really appreciate it. Sure. Thanks, Scott. That's all I got, man. Thanks for your call. All Thanks right, keep up the good work. You too. We'll try. Is it Bilal in Irvine? Bilal. Bilal, how you doing? You can call me Bill. Bill. Yeah. You're completely Americanized. Uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, how are you, Matt? I'm fine, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. I just uh, have been following your show for quite some time, uh, only recently, <clears throat> and um, I came across... Uh, I tried to call you last week uh, on Sunday, but I believe I was a bit late, and uh, today... That's why I'm on time, so I just called to uh, ask a few questions, which I have had in mind for uh, well, quite some time now. Go ahead. Well, as you may, as you may uh, be informed by now, is that I come from a Muslim background, and um, I, I just want, I just this is one question that I really have had in my mind ever since I was a child, and I've been asking this question to lots of people the preachers, my parents, my uh, associates, and everybody else around me. And the question is, why is it that the sole reason I'm born in a Muslim family... Is it, can you repeat that? The, the one reason that I'm born in a Muslim family, and um, I've been raised as a Muslim, I've been uh, brought up as one, I've been taught just those teachings and not taught at the teachings of Christianity or other religions that surround me. Um, why does that make me correct, and why is it that the Christian who has been brought up in his Christian house, he's been told that he's correct and everybody else is going to hell, and in my case, I'm going to hell. I mean, isn't the same thing, that it's, isn't the same way that I feel about Islam, is how the Christian feels about Christianity? I mean, who's right then? Who, who, who is right? Well, you can't, obviously you can't all be right, but you exactly. could all be wrong. Correct. Um... You know, that, that's why, you know, uh, we rationalist skeptical types go, go back down to, you know, the core question. Can any of you prove that any of the supernatural entities that you believe in actually exist? Well, that's a good and, question. And that's as soon as you can't, then, then we say, okay, so we set that aside. Those people, that, that group can't prove that their God exists. This other group can't prove their God exists. And we're atheists because we haven't found the group that can prove that its God exists yet. That's correct. 
I mean, I, I've been thinking about that question, you know, like, is there anything that uh, is going to uh, put on my faith and say this is correct because, you know, I've got the evidence or anything for that matter that points remotely to the idea that I'm correct. And I was looking for that. And I went through all the people who've been healed, or so they say, and uh, I just saw that these things were common between Muslims, Christians, Hindus, and everybody else. Yeah. There's nothing special in any particular religion. Now, the, the whole, the, the funny part, though, is that if I choose to leave Islam, if I choose to be an apostate, I face death threats. Yeah. I, we wouldn't I call that funny. <laughs> I'm glad that you're able to call that funny. A funny <laughs> thing. Let me see the thing is that why did, why did they have to take matters into their own hands? Why can't God himself be uh, good enough to deal with me? I mean, yeah. Why did they have to... Their you know, God is so weak and feeble sword? that he has to send them out to kill you. Exactly. I mean, what the hell do I do then? I mean, there's... Okay, I have to also say that... I, I, this may sound really stupid, but I have been... Uh, ever since a child, I was told about hell and heaven. And whenever the thought of leaving uh, the religion comes to my mind, I, I immediately uh, face this fear, this frightening fear of hell, which has been programmed into me as a child. And I just can't get rid of it. And a lot of people can't. And it's, um, it's one of the things you can ask yourself is, if there was a God, would he have to resort to that kind of fear tactic in order to you know, convince you? I'd recommend um, Ian Hersey Ali's book, Infidel. Mm -hmm. uh, outstanding, especially if you're talking about you know uh, the the her her transition um, from Islam to atheist. Oh. But but yeah, this 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 threat of hell. I mean, it, yeah. it exists all over the place, and and it makes no sense to me why why if there was some kind of loving God that they would resort to that. I I can tell you my personal experience in my my uh, deconversion moment. Uh, I, I had the benefit of having been raised to believe in a loving God who, uh, and a just God who cared about me and was not a jerk. That's and true. so, uh, you know, when I started having questions, I, it, it occurred to me, well, the God that I was raised to believe in is not going to punish me for, for using the brain and intellect that he gave me. And that thought allowed me to put all the fear of hell and punishments and all that aside and just look at the facts rationally. And any God who would punish somebody? Any God who would, who would punish me, that's right, uh, as Matt said, any God that would punish me for that, that's a whole other question. That's a God I'd have to be on the other side of. But, <laughs> um, but uh, within five minutes, after having freed myself of those fears, I realized I'm an atheist. I can't believe this stuff anymore. And today you sit there and you have absolutely no fear. No. Anything whatsoever supernatural. No. I still have fear of the followers, <laughs> but not of any supernatural things now. That is quite impressive, really. Yeah, you know, and people will talk about you know, the praying, etc. Um, and there were people who were praying for God to, you know, take me out. And if I thought for a second that their God could give me so much as a hangnail, I might be a little worried, but I don't. Um, I'm no more afraid of, of, of the God of Christianity or the God of Islam or than, as I am of, you know, the boogeyman or anything else. You know, it's, it's a very funny thing you say that you're, you're actually uh, fearful of the followers because I just realized that's exactly my case now. Yeah. I'm, I'm more afraid of the death threats than the, the fact that I want to have a sword. And in your yeah. case, it's not an irrational fear. I mean, yeah. there's a reason why I and Hersey Lee runs around with bodyguards all over the place and has to cancel some speaking events because she gets death threats and they're real. Now, whether or not your family or, or would, would actually follow through on it, um, I don't know because I don't know your family. No, my family wouldn't be such a problem, but the people, um, like people of the Muslim community here, they wouldn't be very pleased. Yeah. I mean, it, it's really a big scare. I mean, I, you see, this is, this is one thing I actually really want to emphasize on, but I really can't do it. Because if you talk about this in public, they say, you know, you're an infidel, they label you one, and then you get all the hatred, they don't listen to you, do they? And uh, all they say is, you know, you, you were never a true Muslim. 
By the way, I forgot to do this the other day, and this is not meant in any way to necessarily insult you, but I missed out on everybody draw Muhammad Day. No, you didn't. It's the 20th. It's the 20th? Yeah, it's still coming Why up. were the schools doing it early? Oh, I don't know. There's probably <laughs> well, I'm doing it anyway, so I drew my Hey, every finger. day is everybody draw go. Muhammad Day. So... I, there I am. Uh, for all those people who said I was afraid to be an infidel against religions other than Christian, I'm an infidel with respect to all of them. <laughs> and, you know, I, 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 a stick figure. And there as were people it, who were upset about it and they went around and changed as, it. As somebody who plays f tabletop fantasy role playing games, I'm not only going to draw Mohammed, I'm going to write up his stats. <laughs> so cool. You can, so you can beat him up in a game. That, that has to go on the blog. Or team up with him. You could make him a good guy, I guess. That has to go up on the blog. <laughs> Anyway, Bill, thanks a lot for calling. I appreciate right, it. Thanks a lot, man. Nice talking to you. Cheers. Thanks for your call and good luck. Good luck. We got Ted in Dearborn. How are you? Oh, real good. How are you? Not bad. Uh, I'm, I'm calling about the, uh, the, the Texas uh, rewriting history thing. Um, yeah. I'm just wondering, uh, you, you guys are Texans, right? Yeah. Do you, have the, do you know the history of Texas, where it came from? No. I'm a no. transplant. I know a little bit about I, it. I know. Just yeah, we're both. Yeah, we're both. Uh, we were born elsewhere and migrated. We came, got to Texas as fast as we could, as they say. Wow, I, I'm, this is really surprising to me because what I've heard is is, and I'm not a historian, but I've heard that that, that the war uh, between Mexico and and te te Texas was like the first war about slavery on this continent. Am, am I right or wrong? I don't know. Don't know. Okay. Well, this is what I've heard. Okay. Uh, Spain, when when they made the land available, I, guess, I think it was like twenty thousand acres or two thousand acres, it was a, a lot of land. They were given it to people, and they could come in, and as long as they farmed it, they, they they could have it. But they also had to convert to Catholicism, and they could not have slaves. So when the American and, and, and they did that, so they they would discourage Americans because Americans was pr predominantly Protestant at that time. In fact, they didn't even celebrate Christmas until about. Uh, Civil War time, that's when Congress still met on Christmas Day up until around the Civil War. But that's beside the point. Um, when, when the Texans were, were settled over there, they, they had papers for their slaves saying that they were indentured servants, that they weren't slaves to give to the government, you know, so they could see, oh, we don't have slaves. And they they signed papers saying that they would convert to, to Catholicism. And then when, when Mexico broke away, they made Slavery, uh, really, you know, anti-slavery. Everybody was anti-slavery except for the United States. You know, we were a third world country at that time. <laughs> and, like, and, and so when uh, Mexico said, hey, you guys either become Catholics or, or, uh, and get rid of your slaves or get out of our land, uh, they, they, they didn't do it. And so they went over and they, they were going to get them out of the country or kill them. And, uh, that the big massacres happened and, uh, the United States, they, they fanned the flames of patriotism and, and anti-Catholicism and went in there and they, they, they grabbed up Texas and they took it all the way to, uh, to, to California. Okay, but well, I don't, I don't know any of this. And, and I've been I... learning about the, the, the war is that Davy Crockett and, and Daniel Boone and John Wayne were at the Alamo, and that's it. I'm pretty sure John Wayne wasn't. Yeah, and, while I don't, right. and while I don't have any way of uh, verifying any, I really don't. I, I'm not that much of a historian for for this type of stuff. What, well, what's I, happening? I mean, I mean if, if there's any truth to this, I would think that you would uh, kind of seize upon this because I mean, why? Well, because you, your 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 government is trying to institute a, a state religion. Okay, this is something no, that they not. fought against. Okay, it's something that that the, our, our whole country ran from over from England because that was a Christian Christian nation. Well, my 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 question is. What difference does it make what happened 150, 200 I years ago in Texas? he's talking about the revisionist well, history well, of the Board of Education. I'm, I'm talking about it. They're using I, I got this that. I'm religion trying to... thing as, as just a, a wag, wag the dog thing. It, it's... What the State Board of Education, though, is doing is not, it, it's, it's different. It's not, you know, you, you've heard things like, oh, they removed Thomas Jefferson. No, they didn't. Thomas Jefferson's still going to be in, in the books. What they did was they removed him from a particular section. They are not, 
there, there is, you know, in some aspects, some revisionism going on, but it's, it's basically spin. They are promoting an ideology. Thomas Jefferson was removed from a section that talked about influential authors, authors that influenced revolutions. And he was removed and replaced with John Calvin and others. That's the type of thing that's going on. Well, what's already happened is we don't even know anything about what happened between the war between Mexico and the United States. I mean, they've already pretty much taken that out of our history books already. Have they? I don't know. Well, what it, you don't even know anything about it. You I know, didn't I grow up in Texas, and I wasn't... reading some of these other books by Michener. Uh, look, one... Ted, Ted, my, yeah. obje my objection is, that, is this claim that they've removed this, and yet you know it. I, I I don't I, I'm not I don't disagree with you that there are problems here. My thing is that you, you're starting to sound like almost a conspiracy theorist that oh, they're trying that they're trying that they're trying Ted it's Ted like Ted that they're trying to remove this. Oh, you're not going to learn this stuff, and then you're pointing to me and saying, "Well, see, you didn't learn it." Well, I didn't grow up in Texas, and I didn't give a damn about history when I was a student. That's why I don't know it. Obviously, if you know, the, it's not like the the history of Texas has has gone missing. It's not on a milk carton. Well, you won't find but a whole lot of it. I mean, it's like you ask a Japanese person about Pearl Harbor, and they, they don't know anything about it, you know? There, there is an issue right now with the Texas State Board of Education. They are putting um, a certain fundamentalist right-wing spin. They're trying to institute that in the textbooks that will be used in Texas. It is a problem. But it's a very specific kind of problem, and that's that's what Matt is trying to point out. I don't think it's just the, the it, it's kind of like an ongoing problem that's been around for some time. Well, yeah, yes, that's true. The whole idea of the winners writing history, sure. Yeah, I mean, all the different colonies, they were all just different uh, religions. I, the, uh, Maryland was a Catholic colony, you know? And... Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's, there's, no, there's nothing in the Constitution that doesn't stop a state from founding its own religion. Only Congress. Actually, actually, there is. It's called the Fourteenth Amendment that extends the first. Well, what does that say? That the, that the all all of the things that apply to the federal government apply to the states as well. Oh, okay. I'm glad you, to hear you, that. You're, really you're upset because I don't know Texas history, and yet you didn't know the Fourteenth Amendment. See, so but nobody's taking the Fourteenth Amendment away. It's still. Oh, there. I'm not. I'm not blaming you. I'm, I'm. I'm. Like I say, it was news to me when I even heard any anything about this, and I was kind of hoping that you being from Texas, you would have had. Some I'm not if, from if, Texas. If you caught, well, I mean, the, living you, in Texas. I gotcha. you. If you caught the start of the show, uh, I believe Matt mentioned that there will be a gathering at the Capitol to protest the shenanigans of the State Board of Education. Yeah. We're not unaware that there is that there is a problem and we're... We're, we're doing all we can. can. Yeah, it's, there, it's just that there's limits. I mean, these are elected officials and then one of them gets appointed to be the head by the governor and then they go and make decisions virtually in a vacuum. They can pretty much say the hell with what everybody else thinks because that's exactly what they've been doing. So we're, 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 we're part of a rally. The ACA isn't organizing, but we're, we're part of it. Next Sunday, Begin at 11 o'clock at the Capitol. We're hoping to have thousands of people down there to let the State Board of Education know that um, while they can continue to revise history and ignore the public and pollute the minds of the next generation, uh, they can't keep doing it with people remaining silent. And I think once this issue gets a little more attention, I hope we'll see quite a few more of them voted off. I hope you're right. All right, Ted, thanks a lot. All right. We got Shane. You there? Yes, I'm here. How you doing? Hi. What's up, Shane? Um, my family is mostly believers, and I'm I'm an atheist. Mm -hmm. My brother's about eight years old right now, and he's starting to learn about God and wanting to go to church. Mm -hmm. and his his father is really supportive of this. He wants he wants him to learn about God and all this. But I think he's too young to be learning about this, especially in the way that the church tries to teach it. And I think he should wait at least wait until he's old enough to make a rational decision about it. But the fact is that I'm I'm fifteen years old and I have to live with his live in this house for a few more years before I can get out on my own. 
and even then you're not going to have an effect on how your brother's raised, really. If I... Yeah, you're limited in what you can actually do. Yeah. But you can still be an honest, caring brother to your brother, and, uh, you know, nobody's too young to start learning to think critically. You still there, Shane? Yes, I'm here. Okay. You don't have to. You don't even have to do it in a religious context. There's plenty of ways to introduce skepticism and critical thinking, which I would argue even most religious people would think are valuable tools um, to kids. Uh, you know, science fairs. It, Russell talked about uh, teaching Ben the you know the, the real versus imaginary stuff. Um, so there, there's plenty of options, and especially as a big brother, because he's probably look, looks up to you right now and probably will for a long time. Yeah, he does. I just want to get some advice. I want to make sure that if I do something, it's not going to cause too much of a problem for in the next couple of years while I'm still living in this house. Well, I mean, you have to be the judge of that. We're not in your situation. We can't we can't tell you what you know, what the boundaries are in your family. Um but you know, another thing is a, a lot of people go through uh believing in religion for a few years and then get out of it. You know, um I did, Matt did. Uh, even if you see your little brother going religious for a while, to, to, you know that's not the end of the world. He's eight years old, and he's going to largely believe what he's told. But you know, you can be there for him. You can give him honest answers to questions he has. You can give him useful advice, and then you know, see what happens. I mean, obviously, your parents aren't making. Do, do they know you're an atheist? My mom does. My stepdad does not. He's... I don't know how he'd react. Yeah, so you've got the extra complication of, of step-parents and, and siblings, etc. Um, I'm reluctant to give any advice at all, considering, you know, uh, you're a minor. Um, what I tend to tell... I've had, I've had like, 15-year-olds right before and say, look... I'm an atheist, but my folks are making me go to church and whatnot. And what I tell them all is, until you are self-sufficient, you're stuck in their house and do what you can and continue to be the same respectful, caring, loving kid that they've always known. And if they make you go to church, go. Go and take lots of notes and ask lots of questions. And that way they'll know that your atheism is not just a phase or an act of rebellion, that you have openly and honestly considered what their religion has to say, um, that you didn't shirk, you, didn't, you weren't afraid of church, um, and that type of thing, and that you came to a conclusion on your own. And if they can't respect that, then they don't, they, they don't really have a good understanding of what it means to respect and care about somebody. Um, but you are you know, stuck until you're self-sufficient. And the best thing is that you know, it's obvious you, you care about what happens to your little brother. Um, and so I'm not too worried about either of you. Um, it may not always, it may not be easy. You might find yourself in difficult situations. But if you are, uh, you know, honest and, and continue to care about the truth and, and your brother and, you know, you're not trying to necessarily subvert what your parents are doing or what her, your stepdad's doing, uh, I think you'll probably come out okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. And if somebody wanted to point out that, Teaching your brother how to figure things out for himself, this process of discovery, um, of investigation, is valuable. I mean, I, I don't think that you just happened uh, to decide one day to be an atheist. You, you probably had this, a similar process of investigation and discovery. And I think that those, things are, you know, those are things you can teach. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for your call, and good luck. Yeah. As a reminder, after the show's over here in about 10 minutes or so, we get together and go to dinner at Threadgills on Riverside Drive. Uh, any atheist or atheist-friendly person is welcome to come to any of the ACA events. You don't have to be a member to attend. Uh, but if you come down to preach, proselytize, provoke, or pontificate about solipsism, please don't. 
We got Sean in the Bronx. How are you? Hey there, guys. Good evening. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, I was wondering if you uh, if you know anything or have any opinions uh, regarding presuppositionalist apologetics. <sighs> Is this the there must be a rational reason thing? Well, it's. I, I mean, to, to be honest, I'm I'm not uh, exceptionally familiar with it. Um, I, I'm I'm familiar with it more uh, from a uh, from from a DVD with uh, Douglas Wilson and uh, Christopher Hitchens called Collision. You might be familiar with it. I haven't watched um, that yet. And yeah, and Douglas Wilson uses this uh, this tactic of apologetics, um, this presuppositionalist uh, tactic, specifically uh, Van Tilian presuppositionalism. It's called, and as I understand it, um, basically it says that the Bible is the source of of truth, um, and and since it is, since it's, it's the pillar, the foundation of truth, um, you have to assume it, and to you know to, to try to disprove the Bible or to try to you know. Um, argue against God, you need to accept the logic that the Bible well, provides you with. Well, that's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you I, can't I, just I start an argument by this, saying... I wanted to see what... You uh, can't just start what, an argument... Thought, and that, that doesn't surprise <laughs> me, Jeff. They can't. It's an audio problem with it. <laughs> you can't just start an argument by saying, you know, here's the book I'm going to defend, this book is the source of truth, and therefore, you, if you disagree with it at all, you're wrong. That's not an argument. Yeah. Right, well, well, well that's well, bullcrap. Well, you know, to, to play Douglas Wilson for a second, you know, what he would say is, you know, well, um, you know, the, the, the atheist will say, well, you can't use the Bible to prove the Bible. Um, so then Douglas Wilson will say, well, you can't use logic to prove logic. Oh. You know, the, when you, except when that you, he's uh, wrong. You know, yeah, when you that, use logic to prove logic, he'd say, well, you're just opening up that's your Bible a category, to prove that, your Bible. That's yeah. a category error. A book is a book, right? Logic mm -hmm. is a system. Right. It's not the well, same thing. You can't, you can't, you know, throw out one if 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 it's pointed out to you that you have to throw out the other. Yeah, it's 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 silly. Starts right. Yeah. The, well, first well, of all, the, the claim me, that um, was that logic. I mean, not only is it, is it a is it a category error, but to to deny logic, I mean, like that there are certain there are certain axioms that you just can't deny, you know, uh, biblical or not. Um, because, I mean, you know, it's the whole definition of an axiom is, is that in order to disprove it, you have to assume it. And so, so there are things that regardless of, 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 you know, the Bible or not, you, you just can't. There's, there's a difference between axioms that you have to accept in order to get a system like logic to work and axioms that you are told that you have to accept in order to swallow the rest of a book like the Bible. And, and I actually don't buy the axiomatic... I actually don't buy the axiomatic anyway. I think that it's, it's it's the logical absolute absolutes yeah, are and, self evident. And by the way, and Not by the way, those logical absolutes like came from somewhere. You know, they didn't. They weren't um, handed down by the gods to Greek philosophers. <laughs> you know, they, they were the, the whole system was developed. And t some bits of it turned out to be, well, you know, these things just seem to obviously be true all the time, so we're going to operate as if those were true all the time. And even so, as, the, as logic was being developed, there were, there were discoveries, there was, there was research in logic and development of the system. It didn't, like, you know, get handed down on golden plates from, from angels to the first philosophers. Now you could say mm -hmm. you can't say that about the Bible. The Bible's supposed to be a thing that was like, "Bruh," God said, "Bruh," and there it was. Right. Yeah. Well, I guess if, if anything, it seems that uh, that kind of the, the this like presuppositionalist um, argument is kind of the whole. Um, where do where do religionists you know, come up with these terms? I mean, the very word. I, I have enough problem with with the term apologetics. I'm not. Yeah. The Bible is not my field. Right, but well, why would you call? It's, it's, why would you call me um, effort to defend you know, this stuff? What, Apologetics. Apologetics. It sounds terrible. What the Bible. Take, like, okay, fine. On assumption, but you know, why, the, why the, would the person who uses the presuppositionalist argument assumes the Bible from the beginning, where they say that you know other people um, just yeah. assume logic from the beginning? I'm just saying um, it sounds the word apologetic sounds terrible. It's like this is my apology. I believe I believe all this stuff. <laughs> Here's my apology for believing all this yeah, stuff. I, that I, I can't I, I, Yeah, I, I don't know what it means. Like I said, it's not my field. Sounds, I mean that. And, but, I don't but really criticize him for that because you know, presuppositionalism. I can't hear you interrupting him. <laughs> okay, but presuppositionalism. Why not just call it a prioriism? 
Right, yeah. <laughs> well, that has fewer, that has fewer, fewer syllables. What, might, what on earth? It might, might not sound as, as pretentious, but um, Maybe in, in any case, it, it, anybody who hasn't seen this, uh, this documentary, Collision, um, between Douglas Wilson and Christopher Hitchens, he, he uses that a lot. I, I, I suggest it just, you know, just to, to expand who, who's ever uh, hey, you know what? experience of arguments. You know what? If I presuppose that he's wrong, then he's wrong. <laughs> there you go. Because Matt, of course, Matt here is the source of all truth. Yes. That's what we had a guy at the, the board has, has been telling me. Was that guy before the, the show told you you, so. were, you were a god? Something like that. <laughs> I hope so. All right, well, well <laughs> and that, that doesn't surprise me that those are your opinions. That's pretty much what I thought. Um, yeah. But so, so just quickly then before I leave, um, last time I called a while back and, and just brought up the Christian side hug video really briefly. Um, however, there's a newer video, um, which hopefully you've seen, um, and if that, if the Christian side hug video is possibly satire, this one, unfortunately, I'm, I'm convinced isn't. Um, it's the Insane Clown Posse's latest single uh, called Miracles. Yeah, I've heard about it. I haven't paid yet? any attention. I haven't seen it. I, I, I've heard about it. I haven't paid attention to ICP. <laughs> you, you don't pay attention to ICP? Uh, no. That's a shocker. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, if, if, you're, you know, if you're in the mood for entertainment, I'd suggest it. If I'm in the mood for know. entertainment, I'm not going within 10 freaking miles of ICP. <laughs> I mean, uh, just like imagine the worst teleological argument that you can imagine, like the, yeah. the most pitiable argument from trees ever. Yeah. I heard a bunch of people taking it to task. We're almost out of time. i got to let you go. Yeah, yeah, sure, please. Thanks very much for taking my call, guys. You take care. Thanks, Sean. We have Ryan in Milwaukee. Are you calling to correct us? Um, maybe. I, I, I think when you, you uh, hung up on the guy who was a solipsist before, uh -huh. um, and you guys said that solipsists, uh, only think that they exist. That's but I, I, I think what it, what, it, what, it, what I take it is is that a solipsist believes that um, the their first person experience or their first person perspective is undoubtable, and it's the only thing that's that cannot be doubted. Okay, I'd still have hung um, up on him. I'm sorry. What's that? I'd still have hung up on him. That's bullshit. Well, oh, it's, well, that's how I, I actually believe that. I, I mean, okay. I think no, no, no. It's I, I'm not saying <laughs> that. Um, Good. There's things I know with extreme certainty. Like I know with almost a hundred percent certainty that I'm on the phone right now. That I'm talking with you guys. That you you two exist. But there's still a possibility that I could doubt. There's still some you know sliver of a doubt. Uh -huh. Whereas the fact that I exist. I, I can't even begin to doubt that. That's something that I, I can't even, I don't even have a sliver of doubt about that. Of course not. Yeah, but that's, that's, you know, now we have to extend that to every single thing that you think, right? True. And, and that's the point where I have a problem. You've just, that sounds to me like what you're saying is a solipsist is a guy who goes on the assumption that everything he thinks is right. No, no. No? What are you saying, then? That the only thing he can be certain of is his own existence. Okay. Exactly. The only thing I can be absolutely certain of is that I exist. Yeah. And because on that front, I, I and could on that be living in a matrix, you know, brain in a vat, etc. There's, oh. there's always some doubt for something, but the only thing that you can't doubt is that there, this first-person perspective, this first-person experience... Is but I, but I, can doubt, I can doubt that, you're, that your first-person experience is... That we're, we're out of time, and you're <laughs> wrong, because there are, right. we're out of time, and you're wrong, but I'll have to hold that to next time. Thanks to everybody. There's the crew who can't show themselves because we're out of working cameras in the back. Thanks to Jeff and everybody else for coming in. Don't, don't forget, next Sunday the 16th, we'll be at the Capitol, 11 o'clock. Come on down, and we'll be at Threadgill shortly.